So, um, so. Oh. You guys, it wasn't our community service. It was one of our guests. So, oh, the probation you, office had you come across some guests. Catholic workers before? So would you, no, it was would the you first time that I yeah. heard about the Catholic workers when I went like, down to the Mississippi. Oh, so you just came on your own and uh -huh. said, I'm going to see what's happening. I want to be part of this. Mm -hmm. and I want to help in any way that I okay. can. So. Right. Wow. <laughs> so that took a lot of guts. I mean, you had to drop your job and just yeah. everything, right? I mean, you just... Yeah, I saw, yeah, I was a preschool teacher, and I saw that um, things are changing, continuing to change for the worse in right. terms of our kids. Uh, right. They want them to learn the alphabet at three, when all the studies show that they should be socializing up until at least the age of six uh, for their development. And uh, their amount of freedom to run around openly is strictly limited compared to mm -hmm. what it has been in the past. Um, so I found out about, about the pipeline Wow! and I knew that this was going to either increase their freedom mm. or not. Mm -hmm. So I went yeah. to Standing Rock and then I went to the Mississippi stand and I met the Catholic cool. workers there. Do you come from a politically active family or you just sort of let your soul open its wings and fly? Uh, both. My dad's a, a civil rights attorney in Arizona, uh, uh, so I grew up with uh, mm -hmm. knowing see. that the state is unfair. Wow. So. Well, your dad's probably younger than I am, 58. He was born in 59. Oh, what month? <laughs> uh, he's, a, he's a Scorpio. He's November 13th. Oh, so I'm about 10 months older than he is. Oh, I know. Yeah, I'm January 59. So, yeah. Wow, that's great. And uh, you have a lot of siblings? I have uh, an older brother mm. and two younger sisters. Cool. Wow. So yeah, um, I mean, you're going to be around for a while. This is this is going to this is going to affect your life. I mean, you really put your life on the line. I mean, uh, how do you feel about the whole ordeal? Um it affects your life. It affects everybody's right. life. And, right. And um, I saw that I could do whatever yeah. I was capable of. I don't have kids. I don't have any obligations like that. Right. And I saw the necessity to act um, in a different way that right I believe on. was more effective. What does mom and dad say about you? They haven't disowned me. Um, <laughs> my dad, uh, I actually talked to him yesterday or the day before, and he understands why I did it. He doesn't agree with it because it puts me in danger. Mm -hmm. um, sure. But, dads are always going to be dads, and moms uh -huh. are always going to be moms. But he understands that uh, yeah. that it was a necessary action. I'm sure they're standing behind you whatever for whatever you may need. Uh-huh. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dang. So they come, your mom and dad come from a politically neutral, left, right leaning. Where do they stand? Uh, I would say that they are pretty neutral. Okay. Uh, Libertarian types? or No. Uh, hmm. Both are quote unquote Democrats. Okay. So uh -huh. Mainstream. Right on. Yeah. Wow. That's great. Takes a lot of guts. Mm -hmm. Takes a lot of guts. I think we need that and we need people to act with guts. We yeah. think that we as individuals lack uh, self-confidence to right. know that we can be empowered through our actions. Yeah. And right. uh, that is the kind of force that we need to Mm. actuate change and uh, create a better world right on so. yeah and I, I think your statement said something the right on the lines of your conscious inner feelings and sort of oblige you to do that I mean in that sense that you had you see no options but to act you know because there's no all the other actions weren't really creating that many results, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, if I only read it once, by the way, I didn't. Uh -huh. Yeah, but I think there's something in there in regard of that, right? Yeah, we need. I forgot the question. Sorry. Well, no, in regard of having to of what some people, including the register, the Des Moines Register, calling violent actions. You know, what is a violent action? You know, 
I mean, when you see no option, you know, to do that, you know, they were doing this anyway, and then you felt like you have to do this because you are being called for, from whatever powers uh -huh. to do this. I don't think, I know, I don't think that people, I don't think what we did was violent by any means, mm -hmm. um, but it definitely was a form of self-defense mm -hmm. uh, because it does endanger everyone. Uh, but trying not to justify the means to a peaceful end, uh, we did not use any violent tactics. We didn't even threaten anybody. Mm -hmm, right. No, it was just, okay, stop the machine. The machine is mm -hmm. a tool to commit violence, so let's right. stop that. Right. How old are you? About 24? 27. 27. Mm -hmm. Oh, you just look like a young girl. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Frank, we're getting old, Frank. We are old. Hey, wait a minute. Speak for yourself. I have accomplished it. Uh, I even have, have I have a pension. So oh, yeah. that's yeah, definitely yeah, yeah. old. Yeah, he gets ARP now. Dude, oh, of course. Been oh, that that's been years, happening for 10 yeah. years. Yeah. So, I mean, this is really not a fair question, but what do you think is going to happen? Are you ready for anything and everything? Ready for anything and everything. I think uh, <clears throat> that we're going to be surprised by what happens. And I think everyone else is going to be surprised uh, because we have to stop this pipeline and so many amazing things have already happened. Uh, I was a preschool teacher last year and now I'm here facing felonies or whatever. So mm -hmm. uh, we don't know what's going to happen. I don't think it's going to be this open and shut throw us in a cell type of thing. Right, right. I think we'll be mm -hmm. surprised. When yeah. We get acquitted. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's hope for that. But, you know, <laughs> uh, it's good to have all the options on the table at all the times because, you know, they're going to come down heavy on you guys. Absolutely. They're yeah. going to come down. I would not so be surprised of charges of terrorism. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that's all been run through your heads and yeah, what do you think, Jesse? You're here too, and you're you're just yeah. a big <laughs> part of this whole picture. Now, this is a good image with Romero right behind you there. Uh -huh. <laughs> How do you um, feel about the whole ordeal at this stage? What? Uh, it's only been what ten days or so. Of oh, the yeah, raid? since the raid. A couple of week. Oh, oh, since the raid, yeah, just uh, about a week. Yeah. I think. Um, of course, there's a lot to process, and I think that that's when it's most important to go to that spiritual place and can you know create create time and space for ourselves, me and Ruby, to be able to be grounded in faith and grounded in um, knowing that what we've done and what we continue to do is right and and is coming from a place of integrity and love and mm -hmm. compassion and. And that really saves me in those moments of of confusion and despair, you know, about like not knowing really what's coming next, other than that every step I take is one of of, of faith and, and one of being with spirit. And um, and no matter what, then what that step is, that I'm safe and, and everything's going to be fine. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, you've, you've spent uh, some serious time in jail before. And uh, <laughs> that could happen again, right? Yeah, I think I'm definitely looking at something of much higher caliber than the initial. I mean, I was facing 22 years out of Sarpy County two years ago. Um, but the, again, this is, that was state charges. That was on a state level. Um, the feds never picked it up. I'm doing well today. And this is something, obviously. Well, we might have to come visit you in in Idaho for all yeah, we know, right? right? Yeah. Yeah. So it sounds like you'll yeah. come visit me now. <laughs> <laughs> or in Kansas. What's the prison in Kansas that's got the big old one? The... Leavenworth. Leavenworth. But no yeah. women. No women. Oh, no women so, I there. I think Tallahassee is a big one. For oh, women. that Tallahassee doesn't have women. women. Okay. Dang. Okay. Yeah, you've been there. Leavenworth. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, Frank, you're the big support here. I mean, what's your take on all this, man? These uh, two women are uh, extraordinary warriors for their generation. And uh, it is a grace that they've... Uh, both ended up here at the uh, Des Moines Catholic Worker where we could give them some formation in this work. 
that goes all the way back to Catonsville and the plowshares and the barricans. Uh, and even though they're, they are really operating on their own lights and their own spirit, uh, it is so uh, fulfilling for me after 40 years to uh, see someone as wonderful as Jess Resnacek for so many other reasons, but to give her a life, blood for the planet in the casing of a Catholic worker trying to be faithful to Jesus and the lights that she's given. Yeah, what would have Jesus done? Well, he would have, uh, they would have given him a capital punishment for the demonstration he had at the temple. They would have called him a terrorist, a terrorist. and a sabotageur. Yes. And they would have lumped him in with all the other crazy characters in the first century and just put one more Jew on a tree because in the first century, that was as common as, uh, you know, the uh, uh, yearly cold. Uh, so uh, Jesus died uh, uh, like a... Uh, a convicted uh, saboteur. Criminal. Yeah. A criminal. Yeah. 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 So, Terrorist. clearly, yeah. uh, Jess and Ruby do this from a place of privilege. We all do in this country. Uh, but it doesn't make us any less responsible. Right. And in fact, if they're guilty of anything, they're guilty of being responsible. Mm. Taking responsibility for the future. Right and on. more people need to do that. Right. Right. Case dismissed. Case dismissed. <laughs> so, Jesse, the same question goes for you as I pose for Ruby. I mean, uh, you know, I know you're, uh, you have relatives and friends and parents and brothers and whoever, but what, what's their take on all this? <clears throat> I have uh, my immediate family um, is very, very supportive. I have a huge, like, extended family who um, are kind of a Oh, in some ways, isolated myself from and over the years as I've moved more progressively into right. an activist role. Um, but well, you're an extremist now, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> so I, call, I feel like it was just the natural progression when there are no roads left to block and the pipes in the ground and, and there's nothing left to do, then where do you go? Oh, I guess then this is the next natural next step, so... Um, yeah, I think it's just more personal risk involved, and that's what makes it extremism mm -hmm. um, by the likes of others. But yeah. um, by no means um, what I did really all that significant at all in yeah. the big picture, because this is all just so temporary, and we're all just mm -hmm. such small humans. And... Right, right. But the word is reaching out. I mean, as you just saw from the note I brought you from the worker in um, L.A., I mean, people are very supportive down there, and yeah. they've heard, and they've seen, and they've... Yeah. Isn't that wonderful? I love it. It's yeah. so wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, especially, I think it means so much to me, <clears throat> having really committed my life and energies to the worker movement here in Des Moines for the last six years, it really does matter to me that the people in this movement, <clears throat> the various roles that we all play, from keeping the soup kitchen open to doing resistance work of all forms, <clears throat> nonviolently, um, it does matter to me that that I have support in this larger. Oh, tribe. absolutely. And, uh, yeah. And so I think and if the initial shock is kind of wearing off for folks after Ruby and I read our statement, and people are slowly starting to hear the interviews like this and try yeah. to get piece things together, and more and more, I think, um, or I know because I've uh, I've been getting emails and letters of support from people who mm -hmm. are maybe on the edge, saying like, "Is this a plowshares? Is this is this a Catonsville? Is this right. is this a worker? It, what kind yeah. of action is this?" And really, it's all a, of the above. It's all of it. And Ruby, really, um, Ruby and I are yeah. the next upcoming generation in the right. worker movement, and mm -hmm. we're re we're making it our own, yeah. and we're saying this is what it looks like for me and Ruby, and uh, <coughs> hope, and we're asking for your support, and we're and overwhelmingly we're getting it. Right, so, that's, that's wonderful. Exciting. That's great. Wonderful. Thank you. Thanks for your words.